show your support. Like, share and subscribe. Hello, I am that British guy and today I want to talk about hashtag super, hashtag star, hashtag shake up, hashtag, hashtag branding, hashtag superstar shake up, number two. So, this time last year, um, the WWE had their first shake-up since the brand split and they will be doing the same thing again this Monday and Tuesday on Raw and Smackdown Live. And I just wanted to go through my top few picks who I think should go from Raw over to Smackdown and vice versa. Now they will probably do about 10 trades like they did last year but I'm just going to pick 5 from Raw and 5 from Smackdown Live as sort of the the most obvious or the most kind of in need for this shake up. So starting off with the women from Raw going over to Smackdown I think the first pick should be Bailey. Now, Bailey is obviously sort of still in a bit of a feud with Sasha Banks, but it keeps being played out in a really random order. And they obviously, because they are women, will not be at the greatest Royal Rumble pay-per-view or network thing, whatever it is. Glorified house show, basically. Um, they won't be at that, so any kind of payoff could possibly still be at Backlash, which I suppose there will be given what's happened at the Royal Rumble, Elimination Chamber and WrestleMania. And I hope really that that's kind of the end of it. I don't want this to then become a prolonged storyline that kind of goes throughout the summer, maybe even to SummerSlam, because it's not really done a lot anyway. Purely because they held off on it for far too long and then all the heat died and then they tried to do the turn but they kind of turned both of them but not really and and I don't want Sasha to go over to Smackdown because she needs to be kept well away from Charlotte still because ugh, yeah they, they, they need maybe another six months to a year away from each other before they have uh, matches with each other again and I think it would be good for Bailey as well. She's just starting to kind of build up her character again with the crowd and starting to get a bit of a reaction. And SmackDown audiences seem to be more receptive to that, especially towards sort of traditional face characters. So I think that would be beneficial for her. And going the other way, Becky Lynch. Um, this seems to be quite a common thought amongst most people she hasn't really done anything on Smackdown since last year actually she's not been in a proper singles program with anyone she's not been anywhere near the title she's not had sort of a decent storyline with anyone any kind of character development in any way um, even sort of a bad storyline, she's just sort of been there as one of Charlotte's mates and although Naomi's sort of played that part, at least she's kind of had a bit more things to do I mean she just won the, the Battle Royal and she had kind of bits and pieces in the Royal Rumble before that and sort of a few altercations with members of the, the Riot Squad that actually sort of went somewhere over the weeks but Obviously the Riot Squad just laid Becky out and then she was off TV for a while while she was filming a, a film. So, yeah, she needs a complete reset, really. She could turn heel. She doesn't need to straight away if she goes straight over to Raw. But if she was to stay on SmackDown, she kind of has to. But then they're left with no faces, really, apart from Charlotte. And Charlotte as a face is pretty terrible anyway. So, yeah, transfer Becky over to Raw, give her a little bit of a run, try and get the title, maybe have her get a bit too eager to try and get it, and then have her turn in order to get it later in the year, because she definitely deserves it. Um, she's the first SmackDown Women's Champion, and as soon as that program with Alexa Bliss finished, it just went, Pleh. 
and she hasn't done anything so that definitely is something that she needs move her over to Raw and actually use her right next up we have a tag team swap now what I'm trying to do with this as you can probably guess is sort of trade a like for like so what I don't want is say Seth Rollins goes from Raw to Smackdown and then Smackdown end up sending I don't know Ty Dillinger back the other way it's not a very balanced trade and for the most part the rosters are pretty even I would say there's no real need to send a superstar one way and a job the other so we want to kind of do team for team or mid card for mid card so we've got a women swap and now we've got a tag swap um, going from Raw to Smackdown the club now again since losing the titles this time last year they've just they've been used really really badly the past year the the tag scene has been all about Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose and the bar and that's pretty much it and the rest of the tag division has suffered massively because of it leading to a 10 year old boy being picked out of the crowd teaming with Braun Strowman and winning the belts at Wrestlemania and then relinquishing them the day after and if that's not kind of telling you the state of the tag division right there then I don't know what is so again it gives them a perfect chance to reset over on Smackdown feuding with the likes of the New Day, the Bludgeon Brothers if we're going to use the Fashion Police, who are both very, very capable in the ring, them coming up against the, the club would be quite a good program, I think. A, a smaller athletic team against sort of these two monsters would be quite a good thing to see. Um, and not really anything on Raw for the club to do. They've lost out to the revival in this tag team eliminator, because heaven forbid we should call it a tournament. So they won't be involved in the, uh, the vacant tag match um, against the bar at Greatest Royal Rumble so they might as well move away from that brand completely and start again on Smackdown Live and going the other way has to be the Usos they deserve it I think on the, the sort of the flagship show they and the New Day as well I suppose but they more so I think carried the Smackdown tag division all throughout last year they were in amazing matches amazing singles matches as well in the weekly broadcasts um, their pay-per-view matches were often one of if not the best match on the card and it was such a shame that they were on the SummerSlam pre-show and it was quite a shame really that they didn't get some of the time that was given to Alexa Bliss and Nia Jax at um, Wrestlemania given that it was their first time on the main card I think that that match could have done with the time more so um, but other than that they've done everything that is required of them on Smackdown and have really elevated the belts now so move them over to Raw give them a short program against someone that's over there whether that be someone like The Bar, perhaps, if The Bar don't end up winning the belts, or even The Revival, if The Revival don't end up winning the belts, um, and then come sort of SummerSlam this year, um, maybe just after, Raw tag belts for them, definitely, and have them hold them all the way until WrestleMania 35, probably even defend them successfully on the main card again, because they definitely deserve it after the year that they have had. Right, next up, we're going to go kind of both mid-card, both young and still developing, both kind of had hit and miss time recently but could progress to that next level within the next few years. From Raw over to Smackdown, Big Cass. He is back from his injury, reportedly he is clear to wrestle now. They want to kind of move him completely away from any affiliation with uh, Enzo. I believe they're going back to his old name, Colin Cassidy. And why not as well move him away from Raw? 
they spent their whole time as a tag team on the main roster on Raw. So break that affiliation completely, move him over to SmackDown. Few kind of mini feuds um, to start him off. Um, and then sort of elevate him up into that US title picture. I think if he's given time and a chance to actually develop, that could be a really, really good spot for him going forward. And who knows, in a few years' time, maybe a Royal Rumble win and a main event push, maybe a Money in the Bank um, win, possibly. Probably not this year, I think it would be too early, but maybe next year or the year after, I don't see why not. The fact that he's a big guy is always a, a good thing for for Vince to be looking out for. So I think if he's nurtured over there, which tends to kind of be more the thing with SmackDown than Raw, um, then I think that would be a very good thing for him going forward. Going the other way, again somebody who's sort of come through NXT at roughly the same time and has sort of been in and around the mid card, a little bit of a look at the main picture but not really, and talking of money in the bank winners, Baron Corbin. He, after losing his Money in the Bank briefcase to Jinder Mahal last summer, it kind of sapped any last embers of heat that he had. Um, he kind of lost quite a lot of luster after not successfully winning the Intercontinental title against Dean Ambrose last WrestleMania. And I think he probably should have won the belt then. And when he didn't, um, and then ended up beating Ambrose like the, the SmackDown after that, and then... Dean Ambrose took the belt straight over to uh, Raw. He got a bit of a look in at the uh, US title. I think he won it for all of about a month, if that, later in the year after losing the um, Money in the Bank briefcase. And everyone kind of thought, oh, maybe now is the time that uh, he's actually going to step up a bit. But he lost it pretty quickly, I think, to... Um, I think that was when Dolph Ziggler won it or possibly Bobby Roode I'm sure someone can let me know in the comments and then ever since then it's just been absolutely nothing he's definitely not the kind of guy that you can do a Seamus and Cesaro with and just kind of chuck him with another guy who's not really doing a lot and make a tag team out of him because he's supposed to be the lone wolf so move him over to Raw completely sever that tie with everything that's happened on Smackdown Live and in a few months, see how he fares maybe going towards the Intercontinental title, especially if he's going up against the likes of The Miz or Seth Rollins or Samoa Joe in and around that kind of um, calibre of, of people for the Intercontinental title. I think that would do him the world of good, to be honest. Um, so yeah, big cast for Baron Corbin swap. Next up, we have... A kind of a more established guys swap. Um, this is more just to kind of give their opponents somebody else to kind of be in the mix with um, because they're, they're kind of getting to the point where they're facing the same people week in week out or month in month out at least. Um, so it just kind of freshens things up. Not really so much for those guys but more for the other people that will be in and around them. Um, from Raw over to SmackDown, The Big Show, again like Big Cass, reportedly he is ready to make his return um, and hasn't really featured on SmackDown for many many years really, it, since sort of the brand split beforehand um, and it would just be good to put him in and amongst the mix with other people away from who he's been facing on Raw um, admittedly one of those people was Big Cass so ideally you kind of want to keep those two apart from each other but that can be easily done and going the other way Zack Ryder who again hasn't really featured on Raw since the previous brand split um, around the same sort of time that Big Show was on Smackdown really he definitely needs to move away from Mojo Rawley more for Mojo Rawley's sake and he's not really doing anything on SmackDown. He might as well kind of not really do a lot on Raw. and But just with different people. Just to help them out really. Just to 
give those people somebody else to sort of face and, and beat. He could even possibly rekindle some kind of partnership with Kurt Hawkins, maybe, if you want to go down that route. That could be the thing that gives Kurt Hawkins his first win for God knows how long. If they kind of join up and beat, I don't know, if not a pair of jobbers, I was going to say the Colognes, but they're on SmackDown Live, but someone like that. I was then going to say The Ascension, but they're also on SmackDown Live. Hey Slater and Rhino, they'll do. Beat them. Hey! So, yeah, fairly kind of like-for-like like swap. As I say, more for the other guys than for them. And lastly, my final swap from Raw, going over to SmackDown Live, Finn Balor. Now, he is involved with the Intercontinental title at the moment. There will be a four-way match, I believe it's a ladder match, at Greatest Royal Rumble, um, so he can easily not win that, that's not a problem at all, and obviously we've already got the club going over, and so we've got AJ Styles, Finn Balor, the club, all on one brand finally together, we haven't seen that yet, that is something new, it's something interesting, you could easily make them one cohesive unit you could easily turn one or the other of Finn and AJ if necessary to win favour with the club you could have them just kind of have a gentleman style competition between the two of them like we thought we were going to get from Shinsuke and, and AJ obviously you've got that link as well Finn from New Japan just as Shinsuke was as well so we know that, that those two in the ring together is very, very nice to watch. Um, and I just don't see him at the moment going for the Universal title. Whereas, I think he could go for the WWE title on SmackDown Live. So that kind of elevates him up to that top level on SmackDown that I just don't think is going to be possible for him at the moment on Raw when you've got Braun Strowman, Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins, Dean Ambrose when he comes back as long as he doesn't turn heel, although in fairness Finn could anyway, but on the heel side you've got people like um, Samoa Joe, Brock Lesnar if he's still around, so there's far too many people above him on Raw, whereas on the SmackDown Live side, um, especially if Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn don't return to SmackDown Live, as per the stipulation, as long as they don't find some kind of naff reason to write them back onto the SmackDown roster, you've only got AJ, Shinsuke, um, possibly Bobby Roode if he does a heel turn and that kind of pushes him up a little bit. I mean, after all, he's an ex NXT champion, just the same as Finn and Shinsuke are. Um, but yeah, the, as you can see, there's a lot less people that would be obviously above him, especially if this person moves out of the way and goes over to Raw as well, and that is Randy Orton. Now... He has said in the past that he would quite like to move away from SmackDown. He has also said that he prefers playing the heel character. And I think at the moment that is something that uh, Raw are in need of. Okay, you've got Brock Lesnar who isn't really properly a heel. He's only, especially because he's been involved in programs with Roman Reigns. Um... Dean Ambrose, it's rumoured when he comes back he might cause the kind of shield breakup this time and that would turn him heel. And other than that, you've got Samoa Joe and maybe The Miz, but The Miz never really seems to be at that universal title level, whereas Randy Orton definitely is. He's a 13-time world champion and a Grand Slam champion, albeit only for like a month because he'd already lost the US title. And... Speaking of that, it just gets him away from Jinder Mahal. Please, God, don't let us have another summer of Jinder and Randy at every single pay-per-view just for a different belt because no one 
No one wants to see that, least of all the Singh brothers. So yes, here is a reminder of all the picks from Raw to Smackdown, and from Smackdown up to Raw. As you can see, I have tried to keep, as I said, the picks fairly even from each other, not swapping the likes of Finn Balor for Ty Dillinger, or like the Ascension going one way and uh, the Bar going the other, because they're although they're both tag teams, they're not even vaguely on the same level. Or Dana Brooke for Charlotte, say, with there's none of that. And I've also tried to not swap the belts over because that's going to get far too predictable if we swap the belts every single time there's a shake up. And finally, as well, anybody who swapped over last year is not involved in any of the exchanges this year. Again, because you don't want, oh, The Miz jumps from SmackDown to Raw, has a good year at Raw goes over to SmackDown, does the same sorts of things, back and forth, back and forth, it, it, there's no need for that at all. Maybe next year they do the belt swap again, or they swap the New Day go back over to Raw because they've had a bit of time away from it, that makes sense, but swapping people back and forth too quickly, not a good idea, swapping the belt back and forth, not really a good idea, and because of the way the belts are branded, the only two belts you can really swap over are the two mid-card belts. Unless they swap the Universal and the WWE title over and then colour the Universal title blue, which I can't see them doing. And obviously the same with the women's and the tag belts, they're already branded red and blue. There's no way you can't have the blue Smackdown belts on Raw, it's just not going to happen. The only way you could do that is to kind of move the Bludgeon Brothers over to Raw, but then give them the Raw belts, and then whoever wins the Raw belts at Greatest Royal Rumble, you swap them over, and they then end up with the SmackDown belts, but then you've not really swapped the belts over, you've just swapped the champions and given them each other's belts, which is really weird as hell. So, yeah, you can only really swap the Intercontinental and the US title over because of the way that they've branded the belts, which is really stupid. So, there we go. They are my picks for uh, the Superstar Shake-Up. Um, I am very much looking forward to seeing who goes where on Monday and Tuesday. Please let me know who you think is going to be swapping about and what you think of my picks in the comments below. And until next time, I have been that British guy and I will see you very soon. Goodbye. <laughs>